It's a beautiful sight outside, beautiful weather here at the Kennedy Space Center, where we welcome you for our live coverage of NASA and SpaceX's launch of Crew-5. I'm Daryl Nail, and with me is NASA astronaut Bob Binken, who along with Doug Hurley were the first astronauts to fly Crew Dragon into space. Bob, it's great to have you here. You were part of that historic flight. And now here you are back helping us with our launch commentary for today's mission. Well, thank you, Daryl. I'm super excited to be here. A beautiful day to relive my launch experience. Looking forward to it. You certainly will remember this experience well. We've got video recorded from just a less than an hour ago of Crew 5 getting suited up in that historic suit up room. And there you see them. Everything went smoothly. You can see the astronauts there uh, in their spacesuits after getting them fitted and Coral tested. Countdown. And those minus three hours and 23 minutes. The displays are configured for crew ingress on schedule. That's our launch audio. We're going to pause whenever that comes up. But tell me a little bit about those custom flight suits, Bob. Well, Daryl, I've, I've heard those suits referred to as space tuxedos by some of the SpaceX team. And uh, they are custom fit and they, they are, you know, what the crew needs to wear in case there was any sort of an issue inside of the capsule. And here they come, Advanced Crew 5. Complete. Crew are, are, they're ready for crew arrival and crew are walking out of the ONC room now, on schedule. Indeed they are, and there they are. The astronauts of Crew 5 taking their first steps outside as they head to the pad. From left to right, cosmonaut Anna Kikina, Josh Cassida, Commander Nicole Mann, and Koichi Wakata. So that was a pose for a picture. And here they go to their ride out to the pad. Three Teslas all lined up in queue, along with a full security escort. And the folks you see there, family, loved ones. This is a moment to have an exchange, Bob. It is, it's an opportunity for the crew, if you will, to take a little bit of a break from the technical briefs that they've been having this morning as they got suited up and understood what the weather conditions were. They get a chance to say goodbye to their families, uh, see some smiling faces. Again, have a little bit of a relaxing moment with their families before they get serious again and head out to the launch pad. It's, it can be an emotional moment. Uh, absolutely. You know, for the Demo 2 mission, my son was super excited to yell, Launch America. So that was the one thing that you could absolutely hear. Even inside the, the suit with our deep insert earplugs, you could hear that Launch America tune when he uh, sang it out. <laughs> Look at that license plate. I was just noticing that. Blast off. Yeah, Daryl, the, the SpaceX team has been creative with those license plates. It's always cool to see what they add to the Teslas to make the experience just a little bit personalized. It's a nice touch. As you can see, the media in the background positioning themselves for a good shot as the Teslas roll out with a full security escort on a 20-minute drive to pad 39A. And there they go. Four on countdown, T minus three hours and 15 minutes. Crew are beginning their transport from the ONC room to the pad right on schedule. There's the call out from the SpaceX team. The crew now departing the Neil Armstrong operations and checkout building. Slow rolling. As they make a shot available for all of the media and photographers down there. They're beginning their 20 minute drive with a full security escort across NASA's Kennedy Space Center and out to launch pad 39A. The track they're taking goes through the industrial area and then gets out to the NASA causeway and the Kennedy causeway. The weather here at Kennedy is nearly perfect for launch. Let's introduce you now to today's crew. We begin with Nicole Mann. The California native holds a Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering and is a Colonel in the Marine Corps. Nicole was selected by NASA in June 2013 and today the Crew-5 commander will be flying into space for the first time. And once she reaches the space station, she'll be the first Native, of wo Native American woman to stay on station. Sitting next to Nicole is Josh Cassida. He grew up in Bear Lake, Minnesota. The physicist and U.S. Navy test pilot flew 23 combat missions. 
He later became an instructor at the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School, and more recently, he served as the capsule communicator in mission control. But today, he's the pilot aboard Dragon. In the role of mission specialist is veteran Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata. Altogether, Koichi flew four space shuttle missions, a Roscosmos Soyuz, and was on a long duration stay aboard the International Space Station. Altogether, Koichi has spent 11 months in space, the veteran. And the, and the fourth member, the second mission specialist is Roscosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina. She graduated from the Nova Sibirsk State Academy of Water Transport in 2006. In 2012, Anna officially became a candidate for the position of test cosmonaut. Crew 5 will be Anna's first flight into space as part of the recent resumption of integrated crews on U.S. crew spacecraft and the Soyuz with the Russian State Space Corporation Roscosmos. All right, the crew taking a turn onto the Saturn Causeway, and this is the road that leads to the Vehicle Assembly Building. Which is notable, Bob, because the astronauts right now taking a similar path to Hurricane Ian as it crossed the state and came over our area. That's the operations and support building behind it, but then behind that, going through here is the Vehicle Assembly Building, and after studying, studying the data, we learned the storm took uh, that similar path. And as we widen out the view here, you can see, there it is, the Artemis logo, and a great shot of that vehicle assembly building with the crew going by. Now the Crew-5 launch was delayed several days due to Hurricane Ian taking aim at Florida. And after studying the data, here's the path that we found it took. Take a look at this graphic put together by meteorologists with satellite data. It shows the track through the state. And you can see the center of circulation, of course, the devastating impacts to the Fort Myers Beach area. More than 100 people killed and complete devastation. By the time it crossed our area right there, you can see it came out the other side on Florida. Between pad 39A and 39B, and 39B is where we had our moon rocket the SLS and Orion spacecraft. But officials here at NASA and the launch team with SLS made the decision to move the SLS indoors. And this is video from that day, three days prior. The mighty SLS and Orion spacecraft going into the shelter of the vehicle assembly building as Hurricane Ian passed overhead. It's a four mile, 10 hour trek it was that day. And we got winds, Bob, over 96 knots at the top of one of the lightning towers out at pad 39B. So certainly the winds were whipping up high and down below around 60 knots. It was a good move to put that rocket in the shelter. Yes, it's just remarkable to kind of have seen the pack track of the storm, have it come right through the Kennedy Space Center, and to be sitting here just a couple of days later getting ready to launch a crew into space. There you see the security vehicle pauses, comes off to the side, and the Tesla vehicles roll on, along with the MRAP in tow. And this begins the part of a really neat experience, going up the slow grade as they pass the security checkpoint and into the blast danger area. This is the area only for the astronauts and the advanced team, as well as the closeout crew. It's a restricted area, and you go up that slow hill and you're looking right at that rocket. You know, Daryl, as you make your way to the launch pad, you kind of go through layers, if you will, of, of people that can be near you. So whether that's your family and your guests when you're back at the ONC building, uh, but as you make your way to the pad surface, there are these milestones that you get past where you become more and more alone on your ride into orbit. And so heading up this hill uh, to the launch pad surface, it's definitely a smaller group, and that group continues to shrink all the way to hatch closure. And in your case, until it was just you and Doug Hurley. That's true. It was just uh, Doug and I and, uh, of course, uh, all the support team that's uh, reaching out to you via the radio to make sure that the, they're watching over and making sure that you're ready to head off into space. But it was definitely Doug and I alone with our thoughts. These four Crew-5 astronauts now actually on the pad surface. As you can see them driving onto it, there's a track that they just came over that goes around the launch pad, that's a, a relic from the space shuttle era as well as the Apollo. 
There's the base of the rocket. And dead ahead, the elevators to the launch tower that will take them up to the top of the crew access arm and allow them to make entryway into the Crew Dragon. And at T-minus two hours and 55 minutes, we'll get that announcement that the crew has arrived, so, so they're a little early. You can see the flags flying and the clock ticking down. If you're just joining us, you're watching live coverage of SpaceX mission known as Crew-5. As we watch the first two astronauts walk out onto the pad surface, getting ready to do what, and I have to admit, this is, I have to attribute this, the rocket recline. <laughs> there it is. I, I like the way they did it kind of in coordination <laughs> as well. I think that was something that Doug and I didn't quite nail on the Demo-2 <laughs> mission, but uh, I appreciate them getting it sorted out by Crew-5. That was Commander Nicole Mann and Pilot Josh Cassida that just took that look up, and I mentioned the attribution. Uh, that was uh, our voice of mission control. Rob Navius came up with that phrase, so got to give him credit for that, the rocket recline. We'll get the next two mission specialists who will uh, do the same move, but for now, they'll go into the elevator, the same elevator, Bob, that you rode on two missions aboard the space shuttle and Crew Dragon. That's true, Daryl. That, that elevator there on the 39 Alpha launch pad is just a, a, a wonderful experience to kind of be able to bring it back into the game and be able to fly kind of, if you will, uh, slowly up to the pad surface before making a, a stairway walk up to the actual location where you walk out to the Dragon capsule. And there we see the top of the elevators well, where they'll walk out and uh, this is something that they have rehearsed a few times. Certainly we were here when they rehearsed it the other day during what's called a dry dress rehearsal. Yeah, the crew has been through this before and like I mentioned a little bit earlier, it is really important to kind of get the nervousness out to have done these operations uh, once before. We can see uh, Nicole and, and Josh there as they've made their way out of the elevator. They'll walk around the back and make their way up the stairs uh, to the actual walkout area where they'll potentially have a chance to make a phone call, reach out to their family one more time uh, before heading out to the white room itself and climbing into the ship. And the closeout uh, team right behind them from SpaceX as they greet uh, some of the members of that team with some fist bumps. The telephone you mentioned, Bob, is there on the right-hand side of that, uh, that hallway there. But uh, what I notice is the astronauts tend to pause right about here because it looks like that is a spectacular view. It is, Daryl. It is their chance, of course. You know, they, you mentioned the rocket recline where they're able to look up at the rocket. They're kind of co-level with the vehicle at this point. They're able to look out, see the ocean, see the rocket, see the capsule itself uh, before getting ready to kind of take that next step and head into the vehicle. And there you see one of the astronauts doing just that. To the right, they are looking out over Launch Complex 39A and the Space Coast. No doubt having a view that is similar to this. From our flight ops team here at Kennedy, what a great shot. On the left, on the left there, you've got the launch tower, and that is the crew access arm that bridges the gap between the launch tower and the rocket on the right. And you can see, Daryl, the second two crew members getting ready to do their rocket recline, if you will, and get a <laughs> chance to look up at the vehicle. Uh, I know they're excited to get their chance to climb in and, and strap down. Not quite as perfect and in sync as, uh, <laughs> as Josh and uh, Nicole were, but they did a great job. Uh, again, better than Bob and Doug, so. <laughs> better than Bob and Doug, uh, but not quite as tightly choreographed as Nicole and Josh. They, they nailed it. Nonetheless, they get a great view right before they make their way into their spacecraft and that will ultimately take them into space. We've got a split screen now. The two mission specialists on the left and to the right, we're tracking our pilot and commander. Now they stagger the astronauts in this fashion because everything is highly proceduralized, right? As they go through the lines check off the, the mission milestones, and then also it, it's carefully choreographed because you want to have everybody being orderly as they get into the spacecraft. Absolutely, Daryl. There is a well choreographed uh, checklist that the SpaceX 
team has on their tablets as they follow along with the crew accomplishing the steps in front of them. But remember, there's just a single hatchway and they need to go in in sequence and it wouldn't be helpful for all four of them to be there at the same time. <laughs> so uh, we do bring them in in sequence, uh, Nicole boarding first, followed by the rest of the crew. Looking at the launch tower there, pad 39A. Bob, this is the same launch tower that launched the space shuttle. It's been, of course, renovated by SpaceX. They've made a lot of improvements in order to accommodate the Falcon 9, but it also has some throwback to the shuttle era. And there's part of the, the fixed service structure uh, that's still a part of that structure today. That's true, Daryl. The 39 Alpha launch complex was modified to be able to handle the Falcon 9 rocket. Um, and Doug and I were super excited to launch again from the exact same location. There are remnants of the shuttle program that are still kind of out there. There's a, a series of chevrons. You can kind of see them in the, in the image there. The uh, kind of the yellow pathway, if you will, the crews go in the opposite direction there. They, those chevrons point towards the slide wire baskets that they would use if they needed to do an emergency egress off the pad surface. Those slide wire baskets are a legacy item from the shuttle program. And here we go, the first two astronauts to board Crew Dragon. On the left, Josh Cassida, and on the right, Commander Nicole Mann. All smiles as they make their way down the crew access arm. You can see the fist pumps. They're definitely getting excited now as they get ready to board the ship. And they make their way into what's called the White Room. Do a photo op there. Core on countdown. T and you can see two the space. And 47 minutes. Crew have arrived at the White Room just a little bit ahead of schedule. There's the announcement. And uh, you can see one of the SpaceX techs handed Nicole Mann and Josh a Sharpie, which this is something that's actually on their to-do list <laughs> for launch operations. And what they're going to do now is sign their signature onto the NASA meatball, or right there around it. That NASA meatball is encircled with signatures from all the previous NASA crews that have gone up to the International Space Station. That signature would include yours, Bob, as well as your wife, Megan MacArthur. Yes, Joe, that's a nice tradition that the SpaceX team added and uh, allowed kind of Doug and I to get started. And uh, it's pretty neat to get your name added to the wall there, the, the white room wall that leads to the Dragon capsules that head to space station. And there you see her putting her signature, making the way around the NASA meatball handing off the pen to Josh. And to the right, you see the SpaceX logo for their commercial missions. They're also starting a set of signatures, which is a great sign about starting to establish that uh, economy in low Earth orbit, the commercialization of low Earth orbit. It's, it's exciting to see the, the economy in low Earth orbit continue to grow, Daryl. It's also exciting to see the cadre of astronauts continue to grow and, and view that group as, as our partners of folks who've been to low Earth orbit, who've been into the black of space, and uh, it's just exciting to see that group continue to grow. Our launch weather officer for today, Brian Sizik from the 45th Space Wing, telling us that we've got a nice high pressure system in the area, Bob, that's uh, keeping everything clear as uh, the first astronaut climbs Station's aboard. core on countdown at T minus two hours and 44 minutes. Crew have begun ingressing Dragon. And here come our second two astronauts, mission specialists Koichi Wakata and Ana Kikana. They're next up in the white room. Big thumbs up from Koichi. He's the veteran of this uh, group, uh, Bob. We got three first time flyers and a guy that has a lot of experience in space. That's true, Daryl. You know, Koichi was in the astronaut office when I arrived uh, a couple decades ago, you know, just having joined and, and trained as a shuttle astronaut, getting the opportunity to fly on his third space vehicle kind of going forward here. It's got to be exciting for him to try on a new spaceship. I'm making his fifth flight into space. And our mission specialists will now put their signatures on the white room as the commander and pilot finish up securing 
their five-point harness uh, into their uh, seat, getting a snug fit, as you can see there, Josh Cassina, making sure everything is lined up correctly. Looks like he's got four hands. <laughs> but those are his gloves. I'm sure an extra set of hands couldn't hurt. Yeah, no, he just has the two hands, uh, just like <laughs> the rest of us, but he does have the, the gloves there kind of taken off to kind of give him some uh, additional dexterity as he tries to work through getting all the strap-in process completed. You mentioned the five-point harness, uh, much like a racing harness mm -hmm. that the astronauts uh, strap in with. Uh, likely they won't need all of the capability of that harness as they head into orbit and take their ride, uh, but it does have a provide some capability should the emergency escape system be activated to really keep them strapped tightly into their seats. So very exciting watching them getting settled in. We've got this awesome view of the Falcon 9 with Dragon on top, crew on board already. We have been watching the crew since this morning make their way to the launch pad, climb up the fixed service structure, walk across that beautiful crew arm that you see there on your screen and now they are getting settled into each one of their seats and there is the crew five crew there on your right hand screen and the crew will remain in these spacesuits through the ascent portion of today's flight they'll be able to get out of their suits and get a little more comfortable short shortly after um, liftoff but for the portion that is the most dynamic portion of the flight they will remain in those spacesuits uh, and the primary function of those spacesuits is to protect the crew in an event of a cabin depressurization and if that would occur the suit could inflate to provide a habitable, habitable environment long enough for the crew to return home. Not only is today an exciting day because it's launch day, but it's also a pretty exciting year as this year marks Dragon's 10th year in operational flight. It took a lot of love and dedication to get here today and we are still learning and innovating from each launch. From the beginning, Dragon was designed to eventually fly people. The Dragon hanging from the ceiling next to us was initially flown to certify SpaceX for cargo missions to the space station over 10 years ago, which flew in 2010. Yet a window was added to hint at our plans for flying crew in the near future. Now, of course, the Dragon behind us and the Dragon supporting today's mission taking Crew 5 to the space station are very different, a testament to how far we've come. It's been a little over two years since we flew Demo 2, which was on May 30th of 2020. And since then, SpaceX has been regularly flying crew missions for NASA to and from the International Space Station at an average cadence of one flight every six months since Crew 1. Dragon, ready for comm checks. Copy Dragon, stand by for umbilical comm check. And we did just hear those words that comm checks will be starting here shortly. Now on your screen, you're seeing some waves, some thumbs up, some goodbyes <laughs> to the team on the ground. Once they close ADR, this hatch. PLT, MS1, MS2, comm check. CDR has you loud and clear. PLT has you loud and clear. MS1 uh, has you loud and clear. MS2, has you loud and clear? Core, loud and clear. Umbilical comm check is complete. Stand by for ground station comm check. We did discuss Dragon, the- SpaceX, confirm crew displays are configured for launch. Welcome. We would like to give a huge thanks to the NASA and SpaceX team the thousands of people for their development, preparation, and training in getting endurance and crew fire to the launch pad today, and your continued support in helping to make this a successful mission. We look forward to joining the rest of our Expedition 68 crew members aboard the International Space Station. And a special thanks on behalf of all the crew, to our family and friends. It is your love and support that help make dreams come true. Now let's do this. Crew 5 displays are configured for launch. Copy, and Nicole, Josh, Koichi, and Anna, on behalf of the entire team at SpaceX, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride.
and those words from Nicole Mann, the first female commander of a dragon, as she thanked the many folks that have helped get them to this point. Dragon is in configured for terminal count. Launch teams continue to report no issues and everything remains green and for an on-time launch. Has started. And here in just a couple seconds, you might be able to see the strong back arm as it does begin to retract. As Kate said, it will recline two degrees. We can just barely make out that the clamp, on, the clamp arms are now beginning to move. All right, now that those clamp arms are removed, as Sandra said, this will retract by two degrees. Uh, and then at liftoff, the strong back will retract another to 45 degrees, uh, allowing Falcon 9 to clear. Strong back is part of the transporter erector, and the transporter erector is what provides uh, the liquids, and the gases, and the electrical connections to the vehicle. It's also what we use to integrate the vehicle in its horizontal position, and we can see that two degree retraction just now. And the next call out that we should hear in about 20 seconds is that the first stage locks load is complete. Stage one, locks load is complete. And there we go, all of the oxidizer loaded on stage one. Soon we'll hear that stage two locks load is complete and that will be the last propellant call out we'll hear today. Now less than three minutes until launch. Dragon is in terminal count and is on internal power. All right, there we heard the good news that Dragon is now on internal power. Again, the white clouds that you see there at the base of the dragon trunk, totally normal. That's just the vapor uh, from the liquid oxygen. Again, second stage now wrapping up its locks load. Excuse me, first stage wrapping up its locks load um, just a few minutes ago, and now moving toward wrap up of second stage locks load, which will complete at T minus two minutes. Coming up on two minutes until liftoff, standing by for word that stage two locks load has been completed. Dragon is in auto idle. Stage two locks load is complete. There we heard the call out. Falcon 9 is now completely fueled. Wow. All of its propellants. So yeah, it's closed out. So our starting, expect loud venting. All of its propellants, and we can see that leftover liquid oxygen uh, now being vented or released, uh, now flowing further away from the vehicle. So nearly 1 million pounds of liquid oxygen in RP1 now on board Falcon 9. It is fully loaded and ready for launch. And coming up at T minus one minute, we'll hear that Dragon is in countdown. Its flight computer will switch to countdown mode and we'll hear that the flight termination system on Falcon 9 is FPS armed. FPS is armed, Falcon 9 is in startup and is now controlling. And there you heard it, Dragon's, Dragon is in countdown. Dragon's flight computer in countdown, the flight termination system now armed. We should get the final go for launch from SpaceX launch director, Mark Dragon SpaceX. Godspeed, go for launch. SpaceX Dragon, go for launch. SpaceX reports go, seconds. crew reports go, 30 seconds until liftoff. T minus 15. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, engine's full power, and let's go.
T plus 35 seconds into the fifth rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Coming up in just a few seconds, we'll hear the call out for stage one throttle down. Stage one throttle down. Falcon 9 engines throttling down to help pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. This period is known as max Q, and once the vehicle there, we just heard that the vehicle's now traveling faster than the speed of sound. Once through max Q, we'll throttle those Merlin engines back up. Max Q, stage one throttle up. Stage one Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. That call out for one Bravo means we're in the second and final abort mode for the first stage, continuing to get good performance. The crew is already pulling over two Gs. And next up is going to be a couple of events in rapid succession. First will be engine chill on the second stage and back engine. And there you heard that call out. And then we'll have Miko or main engine cutoff where the nine engines igniting will cut off in preparation for second stage separation. Then we'll see the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage ignite and continue to carry the crew five astronauts to orbit. Just like we did on first stage, that MVAC chill is intended to help pre-chill the hardware prior to the full flow of that densified liquid oxygen. Stage one throttle down. At this point in time, those nine Merlin engines are beginning to throttle down in preparation for MECO or main engine cutoff. Standing by for MECO. And Miko. Stage two alpha. And Stage separation confirmed. Copy two alpha. There we should see that second engine begin to ignite now. And obviously confirmed by the loud cheer behind us here at Mission Control Hawthorne. And we're also in two alpha for the aborts if needed. Again, second stage is lit and continuing to carry the crew five astronauts into orbit. We're now getting a view of the first stage uh, after that stage separation. The second stage is still being illuminated by that single Merlin vacuum engine, and that's on the right-hand side of your screen. First stage on the left-hand side of your screen, making its way back to Earth. We will be attempting to land it on our drone ship, um, which today we are using just read the instructions. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. And we did hear that acquisition of the ground station in Bermuda. The first stage is continuing to make its way back to Earth. And the second stage is going Dragon, to continue. SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Another good call, trajectory nominal. Dragon copy. Confirmation there from Commander Nicole Mann. You can also sort of see the, the Space Coast there in the background of the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen. It also looks like you can actually see the thrust plume uh, created by the first stage as it's now rotating just out of screen. Second stage is going to continue firing until a little over eight minutes into the flight, really doing the heavy lifting now, getting the crew into orbit. Everything continues to look nominal on both first and second stages. As I mentioned before, the first stage will be making uh, a, a landing on one of our drone ships, which is currently parked a couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. So we can see now that... Dragon, SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Good confirmation there that we have Dragon good trajectory. Dragon. The second stage now traveling over 5,400 miles per hour. Crew is pulling a little more than 1G right now. That's going to continue to ramp up, peaking just before we get to second stage cutoff here in just a few minutes from now.
first stage we'll be performing two separate burns, a re-entry burn where we reignite three of the Merlin vacuum, excuse me, the Merlin M1D engines on the first stage. Uh, we ignite the center engine into radial, radial engines to help slow it down as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. And then the second final burn, and that will be the landing burn on our drone ship. And the single MVAC engine Dragon that you see. Six, trajectory nominal. The single MVAC You're engine that you see see on the right of your screen is continuing to fire. We did hear another call out that trajectory is nominal. Crew heading in the direction that they are supposed to be. This single engine can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space. Now over 200 kilometers in altitude. We will start to hit events now in a rapid succession as the first stage continues to make its way back to Earth and the second stage continues its burn. Just a couple minutes left in that burn. For those of you just joining us, just over six and a half minutes ago, uh, our four Crew-5 astronauts launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida and they are now making their way into orbit on the second stage inside Dragon. Crew Dragon. Which we're hearing that the trajectory on that is nominal. Uh, Dragon copy. They are in, safe inside uh, Dragon Endurance, whereas the first stage on the left hand side of your screen uh, is making its way back to Earth. We are coming up to the re entry burn, which, as I said before, we ignite three of the nine Merlin engines to help slow the booster down as it re enters the dense part of the Earth's atmosphere. As the entry burn completes, we'll be in the Stage final... Stage one, entry burn startup. So there we Stage heard the two, call out. You can there see it on your screen that that entry burn has been initiated. And as that entry burn completes, we'll be in the final um, different abort phases here shortly, which essentially correspond to areas along the very northeastern seaboard of the U.S. Stage and then, one, entry burn shut down. Great news, that entry burn was shut down. And then those last all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, Atlantic off the coast of Scotland for those abort zones. Everything continues to look nominal for both the first and second stage stages. And the crew with the second stage still attached is now traveling over 13,000 miles per hour. We're about 10 seconds away from Seco 1. Copy, Shannon. Shannon, stage that call out. That call out for Shannon, Ireland, indicative of our final abort zone. After this, we'll see second stage shut off and we'll be listening for confirmation of a good orbit, which tells us the crew and Dragon are exactly and where they need to be. Down. And there we had confirmation that the MVAC has shut down simultaneously. Uh, the entry... Dragon, SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. And you heard that call for a good insertion. We will coast for a few minutes. There we can see the drone ship coming into view as Falcon 9 Launch attempts. Stage one landing leg deploy. You can see those landing legs have now deployed. And as you can see on your screen, and you can hear by the clapping and cheering behind me, Falcon 9 has landed on our drone ship just through the instructions, parked off the coast of Florida. And there is separation. Dragon separation confirmed. Dragon captain again. Dragon Mitsu, launch director on Dragon. On behalf of the entire launch and recovery team, it was an honor and a pleasure to be a part of this mission with you.
And while October 3rd may belong to the Mean Girls, October 5th will forever belong to Crew 5. Godspeed endurance. Cheers. Thank you so much to the Falcon team. Woo! That was a smooth ride up here. We got three rookies that are pretty happy to be floating in space right now, and one uh, veteran astronaut who's pretty happy to be back as well. Let's see what you got to say, Kalushi. Well, Falcon team, uh, you know, it was a smooth ride, and uh, I see all the three happy faces here. It's back in zero g and i appreciate all the help to give us a smooth ride and training and thank you so much thank you for your support Anya. Uh, thank you, Falcon 9 and uh, our fellow uh, agencies, uh, to Ross Cosmos, NASA, and JAXA, and C6 exactly for uh, giving us that opportunity. We so glad to do it together. And uh, thank you for everybody, for all people who with us. Спасибо большое всем агентам Ross Cosmos, NASA, JAXA и естественно SpaceX за предоставленную нам возможность. Мы рады всем экипажам делать то, что мы сейчас делаем. И большое спасибо всем людям, кто сейчас с нами. Really nice words there from the Crew 5 crew as well as. And Dragon Falcon 9C, thanks for the words. Uh, we had a great ride. Have a good mission. We'll see you later. And Dragon, cameras are internal. Also getting some great views inside the capsule here. So if you all want to get a chance to talk about your indicator, we'd all love to hear some. Absolutely, Mike. So, uh, a couple years after he come up with his groundbreaking theory of special relativity, Albert Einstein, in his mind, still had a couple loose ends to tie up. While he was sitting in the patent office, because he wasn't famous yet, definitely should have been, he had what his happiest thought of his entire life. That thought was, person in free fall doesn't feel their own weight. That thought, along with some others that he built upon, led to general relativity and our understanding of gravitation and curvature of space time. We're experiencing Einstein's happiest thought continuously, like the International Space Station has been doing for over 20 years. On Crew 5, call this little guy our free fall indicator. We're here to tell you there's plenty of gravity up here. In fact, that's what's keeping us in orbit right now and preventing this trip on a Crew Dragon from being a one way trip. A little bit like life. We live in the same world, we live in the same universe. Sometimes we experience it in a very different way from our neighbors. We can all keep that in mind. Hopefully we can all continue to do absolutely amazing things, do it together. Well, that was excellent, Josh. We appreciate you all taking the chance to share with us some of those special words and some of the meaning to you all. Tell you, my crewmates are just happy that uh, we didn't break out a dry erase board and get into more detail. <laughs> we'll chat lensing later. Absolutely.